There are a few things in Shonen Jump that are absolute. One, the main protagonist will always get a power up in a time of crisis. Two, the protagonist values his friends and will risk his life in order to protect them. And three, the main protagonist will always be up against a group of villains that will all come to love. Such is the case with Hunter x Hunter and the phenomenally designed Phantom Troop. You see, when we look at criminal organizations or just big baddie groups from other series, there's a cohesion with how they look. There's a semblance with the cast and that's intentional. We the reader or viewer need to immediately know that they're the bad guys. While that may be true in other shonens, that isn't necessarily the case with Hunter x Hunter's Phantom Troop and that too is intentional, by design. The Phantom Troop is engineered in a way that doesn't show it as a destructive group of criminals that are bashed into our heads at the start of the series. We understand that the troop had previously killed an entire clan for their beautiful red eyes and have probably killed more for the sake of money, and I mean it shows. But despite the knowledge that we have of the spiders, the design doesn't reflect back immoral people. They look like the rest of the world and in some cases these characters just look like they could be part of the main cast. The reason being for this is how the Phantom Troop is written. Despite how much they've killed and murdered, Tagashi focuses not on their villainous tendencies, but rather the familial bonds that the troop members share with one another. We see glimpses of this sprinkled throughout the show when a spider gets mad at another for how loud they talk, when a spider is grateful for another's intellect, or when a spider grieves for the loss of their own by shedding tears for a fellow friend. The character driven focus of the writing creates a sense of relatability for the viewers that allows us to humanize and empathize with the troop, its loyalty above all between the members. A great example of this is in the final moments of the fight between Kurapika and Uvogen, where Uvogen, even within his final moments, refuses to say anything that would compromise the troop. And even while enduring torture at the hands of Kurapika, Uvogen repeats the words to kill him, and he dies without giving away a single drop of information, which then kicks the phantom troop members into a state of raw emotion, and we, the viewers, for the first time get to see a fraction of how destructive their powers can be. But perhaps the biggest example we see of humanization of the Phantom Troop is in the York New Arc. Without going too in depth into the arc, Krolo gets captured and the members of the Phantom Troop are divided on how to pursue their next course of action. It creates a fantastic dynamic between the members. Do the troops save Krolo because he's such an important member to the family, or do they respect his wishes and let him die? The members are split on the decision, but they ultimately save him and the arc ends with Pakunoda passing away by sacrificing herself in order to give the information she's learned so the spiders can fight what threatens their future. Which in turn shows us how the troop grieves for her in a future scene. The life of the spider above all. And the writing of the Phantom Troop can't be complete without looking at the design of each and every one of them. It makes sense that these people look like normal folk, a lot of them wearing what's relatively normal in the world of Hunter x Hunter, and even from our world where we can rock casual wear. It sets a tone of what I had mentioned before. The troop members are people and they'll dress like people. Despite all having very distinct and unique looks to them, there is one thing that unifies the Phantom Troop. A tattoo of a spider with a number on it indicating which leg they are on the spider. The tattoo for the most part is hidden away and never seen, with a few rare exceptions sprinkled throughout the series. By keeping the one thing that unifies their look hidden away, for the most part, solidifies two design ideas that I think Tagashi wanted to implement within the spiders. The first is that the Phantom Troop is a collective group of people from Meteor City, a junk town whose residents have no identity. Yet, the design of the troop members resemble a large plethora of cultures that we see in our own world. The second is that while they all have different design goals from different cultures, they all come together to form one cohesive body of a heister. For instance, at first glance, we can tell that Uvogen is a powerhouse that likes to show off his power, while someone like Shalnark, who has a smaller frame, will probably stay in the back and do work from there. How about characters with the more medium builds, like Finks, whose angry eyes and punk-like body posture indicates that he likes to get into fights. Even the droopy glasses of Shizuku play into the fact that she's an airhead. We can all tell these things about each of the characters and the type of roles they will play in a high situation because of their design. They got their frontline and the people in the back cleaning up their messes. 
Their design is so good, in fact, that you can put a silhouette over each and every one of the Phantom Troop members and see that none of them look identical. And that, my friends, is a masterclass in character design. However, despite all the great qualities that the troop members have, Tagashi never lets us forget that they're criminals. They're thieves and murderers and will seek out whichever makes them richest, and perhaps that's best reflected in each of their Nen powers. Kurotopi uses her Nen powers to create replicas to stage heists, Pakunoda will use her Nen abilities to extract as much information out of someone as she can, while someone like Machi can use her Nen powers to heal the party back up. However, the best reflection of this is in the leader, Krolo, and his abilities to store Nen abilities into a book. But he doesn't just store other people's Nen powers, he straight up steals them, leaving the other person not able to use Nen until Krolo gives up on the ability. This is best shown in the manga when Krolo asks Shalnark if he needs his ability, but outside of the Phantom Troop members, we can pretty much assume that the stolen abilities will never be given back. And it's these reasons why I find the Phantom Troop so phenomenal. Hell, even in this video, I was only able to scratch the surface of what makes them so good, but if I had to sum it up, the design was engineered so wonderfully to fit the narrative world of Hunter x Hunter. And it was Tagashi's decision to make everyone people first, then villains second, to push a morally grey ideology into our heads, one of the many themes of Hunter x Hunter. Nothing is ever black and white. And it's because of that line of thought that pushes the Phantom Troop to my all time favorite group of anime villains. This has been Jay, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.